Hello guys, my name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine and you want to follow the real life updates from my country, please subscribe. And today I want to speak a little bit about The Hague, which is a city where I dream to vlog one day and vlog directly from the trial on Vladimir Putin. But so far, a court began and it is Ukraine against Russia and we are trying to remind global community that what Russia does right now in Ukraine is genocide. I know many are afraid of this word, many are super particular with the phrase, but honestly, with those who want to be super careful, super tolerant, I invite you to Ukraine, I invite you to Mariupol, I invite you to mass uh, graves and uh, graveyards of Bucha. Um, I invite you to watch documentaries about thousands of stolen Ukrainian children and after that you can reread the Convention of United Nations and think whether the definition satisfies the realities that you have seen. But I know many of you support, we don't have to stumble upon words because what happens now in Ukraine is a tragedy. It happens daily, it results in lots of deaths I know many like watching Ukrainian resilience, I also try to concentrate on that, but it is a constant tragedy, a constant death, a constant trauma that we are dealing with. So please, um, often when you give advice, when you doubt, remember, we are not typical ordinary country at the moment. We are a country torn by Russian terrorism, bombed daily. We are a country where people are killed by invaders. This is a very important note that many forget when given advice or being afraid of using a word. So uh, let me remind you what is happening at the moment. On the 18th of September, the trial started. At the very beginning, Russia did not want to participate, but now it decided to use The Hague as a narrative, Russian narrative platform, as a possibility to spread more Russian propaganda. I'm convinced no one will believe that I am sorry bullshit, but anyway, they are actively using that. Once again, if you're watching this video, you agree with me and you're not yet subscribed, please do and help us fight informational warfare because it is very real and court in The Hague proves. One of the most interesting, unexpected and dissatisfying things that I've learned about the international court is that they can only say that the country is guilty, but there are no punishments for countries. So what we are seeking there is justice. And I am uh, convinced like we have to win this case because it's important uh, for the world. And as one of the advocates said, it's not just about Ukraine, it's just about the protection of international law. Because what we see during this last years Oh my God, like a year and a half, but it's coming close to a year. Actually, one of the addresses in the court started with the number of days and they are reaching 600. 600 days when Ukrainians are killed on a daily basis. And more and more people in the world are getting tired of that and like saying like, oh, okay, we also have problems like, and name some really minor problems like electricity prices, guys. Um, one more thing that I feel, and maybe I will record a separate video on that. Uh, remember, it's not the Ukrainian fault that we have this war right now because Russia came here. And it's not that Ukraine is dealing with some crisis. It's Russia invaded us. Just before this invasion, we did not ask for any support, for any help. Uh, we were dealing by ourselves, living in our country, our normal life. So let me quickly go through the things that uh, we name in court, but this is just an iceberg of all the crimes that Russia committed in Ukraine. And here we have like <clears throat> uh, almost 600 days of war when civilian infrastructure is destroyed, civilian objects are targeted like hospitals, like schools. Uh, we also hear that Russia constantly denies the existence of Ukrainian people, of Ukrainian language, Ukrainian culture, trying to uh, demonstrate that like we are destroying something that is non-existent. Also, uh, there are lots of material, physical examples of evidence. And I know that those people who doubt, they can see it. 
as mass graves and butcher in Irpin, I have been to this cities as the totally destroyed city of Mariupol and Volnovakha, once beautiful towns. Anyone, even from the drones, can see satellite images. Tortures that were applied to Ukrainian uh, prisoners of war, among whom there were also civilians in Kherson, uh, <coughs> in Izum. And uh, there are records of such things, and it's really easy to prove it constantly to Russian narratives of uh, uh, Ukraine being a Nazi country or something like that. Also, thousands of stolen people and thousands of stolen and taken to Russia Ukrainian children. And <clears throat> all of that happens now. The problem is this war is not ended. And uh, do not, like, we cannot feel relaxed. And I know that some people get irritated, like, oh my God, once again Ukraine. But guys, it's once again Russia killing Ukraine. We haven't done anything yet. This war is uh, hot. It's happening. People die daily. Children die daily. Nothing changed. So how can we get tired? I do like the quotation of Operator Starsky that he said once, at war, when you're tired, you're dead. So we don't have this right. And of course, Russia does not have any evidence to prove that Ukraine is a Nazi country. They are building their narratives of total bullshit. Uh, but they are playing with tolerant audience. Of course, they have lots of supporters among uh, non-democratic countries, various authoritarian regimes and advocates that work for Russia prove that very vividly. Among them, representatives of super supportive governmental Iranian um, lawyers, uh, Chinese lawyers. Once again, we very clearly see who is the ally of Russia and an African advocate who worked with really bad cases supporting people no one else wanted. So from this perspective, we may say that Russia has troubles. It did not manage to collect like um, normal groups that can help and uh, like devil's advocates or whatever you call it. By the way, I've just noticed it looks funny. This is a hammer and Lublin has, I'm in Lublin right now for until Friday. Uh, uh, for an NGO workshop and um, they have one mystical story about the devil and the court here so it's kind of symbolic <laughs> that I'm recording this video here and the hotel rooms are designed with uh, some devil elements which is weird for a super catholic country and um, a hammer <clears throat> so uh, the explosion of a dam like no one needs anything you you've seen that online you've seen you watched it this is actually something awful about this war that we can see things that we cannot stop or interfere in so the dam was destroyed lots of people were killed in their houses by that huge echo site and what is more important these are not elementary um, crimes that were committed by some bad people uh, these are systemic approaches, and we've seen the interviews of soldiers, we've seen the interviews of Prihozhin's army, where they describe the orders to be super violent, to kill children, to execute teenagers and civilians. And what if not genocide? What if not crime against humanity, that is? Why on earth are you so much afraid of words? and not afraid of reality. We cannot blur anything like Facebook or uh, Twitter does. We cannot blur our reality and imagine how bad I feel when I see that I want to share my reality, but it may be too traumatic for people, just my narrative, not my reality. <clears throat> so, uh, what is more important, consequences of this war come to other countries. And it's not because of problems inside Ukraine. It's about Russia invading Ukraine, destroying our ports, blocking the Black Sea, not letting us pass food and other things. So it's extremely important to understand. Yeah, I have a, like uh, notes that I want to tell you um, that celebrating this 75th anniversary of UN Genocide Convention we have to prove that all of these papers has at least some meaning. And um, I think that it's just weird for me as a Ukrainian that we still have to prove that Russia is a terrorist country committed genocide against Ukraine right now, not for the first time. But guys, it's ready to continue uh, in some of your countries. And we have to stop it here. 
we've sacrificed enough and now our time is to win. And I'm really grateful that 32 countries of the world, like Norway and New Zealand, uh, also um, take part in this trial supporting Ukraine. They have also charged the Russia of genocide in Ukraine. And uh, it is very and very important that we do not speak for ourselves just. So to sum it all up, first of all, if you're not yet subscribed, subscribe, share and help us spread this message. It's important for Ukraine to win this court, even though it will not put Russia in jail. But we have to demonstrate that such crimes and terrorist acts, they have to be persecuted. Otherwise, they will inspire more conflicts, more aggression and more authoritarian regimes. And we definitely do not want that. Uh, so let me know what are the other things you would like me to discuss in my videos. Would you like to know this legend from Lublin? And thank you so much for your support for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons. You can follow me on Instagram, there I share more of my trip, uh, join my threads and Twitter and Discord community. Hopefully we will have live this Saturday and do check some of our t-shirts and beautiful merch. I will leave the link below this video in the description. But most of all, thank you for understanding, for being friends of Ukraine, for not being tired of us and Slava Ukraini!